All right, so you should be able to hear me now. All right, hopefully that's better. I think it's still tied to the party that I was in before. So just give me a, a an acknowledgement that you can hear me. Actually, I could probably go to the live stream myself. Okay, perfect. All right, so like it, there's a lot going on in the title of the video, so I'm going to try to structure some of these going forward, and some is just going to be a random gameplay. So the first thing we want to do is I'm just going to go through the Enterprise bridge setup that, that I have here. So in <laughs> so in Star Trek Online, there are some ships that allow for you to have full access to the interior. I was doing a couple of screenshots to the server about my Romulan Warbird, and now I got the Enterprise. And the Enterprise is actually a pretty sweet one. There's some interactives that you can do with the crew, like I can talk to my tactical officer here and, and select a small craft. But most of their, mostly there really is no interactivity, but you can sit down, you can kind of get a feel for the ship. I think it's pretty awesome that 0718 is, is, a, is my stand-in counselor. I think that's pretty sweet. But let's go over to my ready room. See, this does a pretty good job of, let's see, I guess I'm not just going to be on the, on the couch here, uh, of simulating Captain Picard's ready room. And he has a bed in here. There's a freaking bed in here. Um, you can also, of course, I think you might be able to sit down in the chair. Yeah. And... Whoa, it's getting a little crazy. You can access your account bank, your library files, and con contact duty officers, which is one of the best ways to do some duty officer missions, depending on where you are. I want to go and just check out all the stations back here. I don't ever really remember all the stations being manned in uh, the next generation. And then that's one of my bridge officers. So we are going to go and check out... Let's go to engineering. So not every door you can go into. However, this just looks pretty cool. So here you can talk to the operations officer and, and do some duty officer missions. And same thing, we have our engineering officer over there. And this is going to answer the age-old question, what's behind this wall right here? Answer is nothing. I think it's actually, it does engineering support. <laughs> so that actually doesn't go anywhere. And I was a little disappointed the lifts don't work. But it does look cool, I gotta say. And, uh, just pretty awesome. I love this interior. Probably because I love this series so much. And let's go over here, because there's nothing else that's interactive on this deck. Alright, so let's go to 10 forward and the holodeck. Let's get this zoomed in a little bit. <laughs> I saw that Cyanica. So this is actually pretty cool, I have to admit. Although it would be cool if you could invite a friend and play 3D chess. I gotta say that would actually be a really good addition. Oh, got a problem. Why are you, why are you being all creeper-like over there? So... I think Ten Ford needs Guinan, personally. 
We have our chef and our bartender for duty officer missions there. And we can go into the holodecks. They don't do anything though. You can't turn them on. They're not interactive. They're just offline is the best way to put it. There are two of them. Which is, you know, it's, it's cool. I wish you could just actually like do a, a, like a training simulation or something to that effect in them. I think that would be a really nice touch to it. All right, so let's go to captain's quarters and sick bay and the transporter room. So we all remember the captain's quarters from the series, having a conference table over there, having a sofa, and then in his bed. He's got a better captain's quarters than uh, than Janeway d does on the Voyager. I can probably show that in another video. But here's the thing. This is the thing that's a little creepy to me. People just walk by and look in. <laughs> they just keep opening themselves. I think that's a little weird but it's probably within the coding that they had to have it set up that way. Oh, and the first officers from him? Is that accurate? I don't recall Riker being across from the captain. And wouldn't that be dangerous in case you're like being being boarded they're like, oh, let's pick up both of them this way. Jeffrey's tube. All right, so now we're in sick bay, and uh, we can definitely, you know, scope out what Doctor Crusher is working on. Be really freaking nosy. I think one thing that would be a really cool addition is to activate an EMH. I think that would be just, you know, just stupid fun. Instead of having the doctor just standing there, you activate the EMH to do duty officer missions. That's sick base storage. What is that? That is. What is that? Cetacean Ops? Alright, so that's sick bay. And... And here is the... Unlabeled door. I think that is it. Yep. So, yeah, I was going to say Sanica. I did not think he was across the hall from Picard. So, that's, that's the Enterprise interior layout. I think it's really cool. I love ship interiors because. You know, we, we love our Star Trek stories so much. And I think that they would be, it would be really cool if they took ships from books and did this. I think that would be great. But definitely some sort of interactivity, more so than they have now, would really make it a solid purchase for a lot of fans to do. Because I think we want to move around in the ship and kind of do different things. <laughs> oh, Brian's on Deep Space Nine. <laughs> so, like I said, I will show you guys the Voyager interior. I think that one's pretty cool. 
And my Romulan Warbird, they're uh, they're growing wheat, which is kind of weird. But I'll, I will show that in another video as well. So we're gonna go ahead and let's see character at handle. Let me see if I can do this with you, Mac. Why won't it let me? That's weird. Why I can't type anything in there. Okay. Not going to worry about that. I'm going to return. You have to go to the bridge to leave. And that's not the turbo shaft. Yeah, I swear to God, the Romans are growing weed on their starships. Okay, so the next one, Sion Common, is talking about ultimate tech upgrades. So I want to show you guys a couple of things here. I know Mac, it wouldn't let me, so I have to figure that that piece out. So every weapon you see here started off at Mark 12. I took them and upgraded them with an ultimate tech upgrade to mark 15 so that they do better and these are these are parts of sets i really like which is why i upgraded them and so i do want to show you guys what i mean just open that one up and i'll use this one so this is your your upgrade screen so when you are working on a lot of hang on one second because this is so crafting is going to tie into that upgrading the higher you craft your certain weapons the more experience you apply the better the crafting you can do so i'm going to go back over here to inventory and show you on Actually, I'll do this one. Upgrade. So then you need a tech upgrade. I only have one left, sadly, because I've been using them too much. But the ultimate tech upgrade is something you should cherish because it does exactly what you need it to do. It brings it up all the way up to Mark 15, gives you the quality that you can possibly get, and it makes it more powerful. So if I put that tech upgrade there, you guys can see that the technology points is going to increase it from a Mark 12 to a Mark 15. And if we take a look at where it stands at Mark 12, it has that two targets, 724.9 phaser damage, 580 DPS. Now it has 973.1 phaser, 778.5 DPS. So these things are going to be incredibly useful. In comparison, if I take, let's see here. I mean, that does nothing. <laughs> you can do an accelerator on it and, you know, it. it's, it's just, I mean, you can do which one? This is the Enhanced Universal Tech Upgrade. Uh, 
and and you can apply that upgrade but as you can see the possible end result is only mark 13 so you would have to go through multiple different versions of this versus just applying a single ultimate tech upgrade so if you see a monthly event if you see these in the store I can't recommend enough for you to pick these up they are amazing units to apply I've done them let's see if we go to my ship and crew I've done it with Jayla staff Advanced Herald Anti-Proton Beam Projector Mark 15 to my Undine Body Armor. Um, basically, anything I'm going to be using for a long time, I'm using the Ultimate Tech Upgrade on. And I plan on getting more. I, I use them very liberally because I don't mind spending on this game. However, if you are not going to be spending a whole bunch of money on the game, I would cherish these and be really sure what you're going to be sp using them on because they can be very difficult to obtain. I mean, even I was I was looking for them in the store and I couldn't even really find them in the Zen store. There's a lot of There's a lot of experimental ship upgrade tokens that you can get to upgrade your ship to a tier 6X, but none, uh, I actually don't think, maybe in the mud store where everything is super duper expensive. Yeah. Yeah, the one ultimate tech upgrade is in there. See, most of these have these in there. In the mud sale, definitely grab that and you see I, I've got one there I got one there um, there's a couple more things I definitely want to get in here but I'm not gonna spend 80 bucks a pop on these that's how much 8,000 Zen is um, like I said I would I would cherish them they are very difficult to get but I actually got a lot of stuff upgraded and working to the point that I wanted to. It's the main reason I have beams on a um, on an escort is because they're Mark 15. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is weapons, ground weapons especially. And the best way to show you guys what I mean, I know I'm in my Atlas class right now. I hate this ship, but I got to level it up. So we're going to just beam down to the planet and show you some of these weapons. This was the research I did about the best ground weapons available in the game. Unfortunately, they are locked behind the low buy store. So if you are free to play and you're doing the five month event, if you're going to go for the low buy, they're incredibly inexpensive. Um, I should say relatively inexpensive. They are about... I want to say a hundred low buy, maybe a hundred and fifty low buy a piece. So this is where I got Jayla staff. I do like Jayla staff because it does a ranged attack and it does a melee attack. And we can go over the stats, but I just want to use it. it. Looks like somebody came through and wiped out a lot of the doings. So, hopefully they spawn... Resp oh yeah. People have been through here and killed a lot of the scorpions. One. There they are. Oh, no. I might just run over and kill these Romulans. Man, they wiped them all out. Holy smokes. One thing I would love is I would love a weapon that has a longer range. So, up in these towers, there's some Romulans, and hopefully they're still alive. Because I'm trying to get over here to shoot them. Secrets of the Tal Shiar. Satellite tower, where are you guys?
So keep in mind, Jayla's staff is not one of the ones they've mentioned that was the best weapon around. But I just love playing with it. So it does basically. Why is it just hitting? Hang on, I gotta cycle up my camera. There we go. So that was Jayla's staff. Oh. What? So you see how it's chaining to all the enemies? That is the Iconian Sphere I was telling you guys about. So that's the one from... Ooh, ooh hello from the low buy store that is just on lock on to them. That's a ton of fun. And now they're all drones. Because I assimilated them. <laughs> um, I like the Iconian store a lot. I'm not, I'm not the store. The Iconian uh, staff a lot. I think it is a ton of fun. It's super fast to fire you can really rely on oh what are they fighting over here oh, he, he's been assimilated <laughs> um, you can rely on it to fire fast and you can actually do pretty big weapon blast there as it's heavy heavy weapon there is here comes a doctor there is one additional weapon I don't have slotted, and I will go ahead. I'm not a big fan of this weapon because its firing rate is so incredibly slow. Let's see. Oh man, it might be in my bank actually. Okay, I gotta go retrieve it from my bank and hopefully I'm just going to shoot these guys. It's a fun weapon. I gotta say. So I'm gonna go ahead. Come on, move it. Jeez. Man, he's going slow. I'm gonna hit the transporter here and transport back to town and see if I can pull it out of my bank and show you guys. But it is called the Boleen. That was weird. And the Boleen is another weapon available in the low buy store for approximately the same amount. Uh, bank. And. There we go. Move to inventory. I never upgraded the bowling from a Mark 12. It has this like really weird sweep maneuver. I don't know. I haven't really used it that much. I was not a fan. Oh, 
How am I out of range on that? Yeah, it's it's so slow. It's it's really bad slow. So that's the main reason I don't use the bowling. I think the bowling is a great weapon. Um, let's break out Jay Jayla's, and I'll show you some melee action with Jayla's staff. If I can actually target the right opponent. Man, the auto target on PlayStation is so bad. Wow, yeah, that's pretty bad. But I do like Jayla's. Oh my god. I do like Jayla's staff. I think it's fun. So, we have, we talked about the ultimate tech upgrades. We did our Enterprise tour. We talked about some of the best ground weapons. I do just want to say that a lot of the best ground weapons, if you don't have the low buy and you can't the the items within the low buy store, then remember a lot of the consoles. A lot of the consoles are absolutely wonderful for using on the ground to help yourself with that. So that's one reason I have, you know, these these pop I think they've gotten me through so many different away missions. They are absolutely ridiculously overpowered but that's just a console that I use on my away missions there's many more in the game that you can choose from um, it's really up to you but we are gonna go ahead and open up some uh, loot crates I looked at the odds earlier today and the odds for the loot crates were who what 240 boxes for a tier 6 starship so i um, not sure my odds are going to be that great of getting them but you know we'll see we'll see how it goes oh you actually died Mac Did, did the people you're playing with just suck? <laughs> so I'm gonna go go ahead and get us out of Deathland. Cause they're just gonna keep spawning and, and if I open loot crates they're just gonna kill me over and over again. So I'm gonna get to a safe space in the city and then we can uh, see if I can manage a tier 6 ship from these uh, infinity loot boxes. Get out of here, Klingons! Stupid Klingons. Okay, let's go over to inventory. Where do I put my extra crap? My inventory is always full. Um, what I've done is I've bought so many different inventory slots for that sort of thing, so I no longer have the problem. But you literally have to move it to your bank, to your inventory, or use it up or sell it if you're not going to buy those extra slots. Okay. 
So, we're going to open 50, I think, and see where we're at. Oh, I got a tier 5 ship. That's worthless. <laughs> Duty officers, no! Oh. Terran Empire kits. I don't know what that is. Research and development pack. Personal trait in space. That's kind of nice. Research assignments. Temporal beacon storage. I don't know what that is. Oh, time. It's a duty officer assignment. More duty officer sentence. More duty officers. F fleet support duty officer pack. I don't know. I'm not seeing a whole heck of a lot of stuff. 750 uh, reputation mark bonus pool. Salvage technology bonus pool. Man, this, is, this might be a bust tonight. Mirror incursion research assignments. Dilithium mining claim. No! Wait, can I give this one away? Oh, it's bound to my account. Ugh. I have so many of those. Special equipment pack. Herald kits. I'm curious what those are. Bonus pools. Man. How many? We got 10 more. I actually got 20, but I'm not sure if I'm going to burn them here. Or put them up on the exchange. Come on, give me that tier 6 ship. Special equipment pack. Delta Expedition kits. Frickin' salvage technology. Boom! Boom! Yes! Woo! Yes, boys and girls. I got it. I got it. I get, I'm getting so freaking lucky with these loot crates. I'm telling you, less than 50 and the odds are every 240. That is pretty freaking sweet. Um, this right here, this is what it was all for. The Inf Infinity Prize Pack Tier 6 ship. Ooh, boy. I'm, I'm thinking I might... S nah, I'll, I'll go for another four. What if I pull another one? Wouldn't that be pretty freaking sweet? And get rid of that damn treble. Okay, so we got 10 keys left. We did our 50. We got our tier 6 ship. I'm just going to show it to you guys here. I'm not going to choose it out here. But this is what you can choose from. The Deimos Pilot Destroyer. The Mirror Warship. The Liberated Borg Command Juggernaut. Sionica, I might get that one. Undine Sherex Bio Warship. Kelvin Divergence Lockbox Ship Pack. This is one of the ships that just looks pretty, I want. The Ferengi Quark Marauder. Section 31 Intel Science Destroyer. The Najek Intel Battlecruiser. Styx Terran Dreadnought Cruiser. Voth Rampart Command Flight Deck Carrier. Tholian Mo Carrier. Herc Ravager Strike Wing. Mirror Strike Wing Escorts, Benthen Assault Cruiser, 
Vodwar Manasa Assault Escort. Zindi Insectoid Olean Heavy Strike Wing Escort. I love those Strike Wing Escorts. Krenum Imperium Warship. Herald Quas Flight Deck. Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser. Oh, I could have some fun with that. Nakul Tadari Raider. Cardassian Keldon Cruiser. Jem'Hadar Dreadnought. Kelvin Timeline Starship. What is this one? Okay, so you choose. I think this was... Let's see. Yeah, the Heavy Command Cruiser is the Enterprise from the movies. Alachi Satath Escort. Tal Shiar Adapted Destroyer. Sphere Builder Denuous Dreadnought Carrier. Zindi Aquatic Bristos Dreadnought Carrier. TOS Dreadnought Starship. I think that's that's the ship I have now, the Atlas class. Miradorn Theta Class Heavy Raider. Sona Command Science Vessel. Temporal Science Vessel. Zenkethi Shukdin Escort. Harold Vont Dreadnought Carrier. Nikul Archeros Battlecruiser. Discovery Starship. That is my Crossfield class, the USS Discovery. Or a Klingon Sarcophagus Dreadnought Carrier. And the Jemadar Light Battlecruiser. So, I'm going to go back. I am I am just stoked beyond belief. I will tell you guys that I did spend $150 on trying to get the Voyager J, and that did not work out. So I'm happy that it's finally paying off a little bit. So it does eventually come back to you. But thank you guys so much for watching this live stream tonight. Take care, and I will talk with you guys later.